Good evening everybody, my name is Crystal and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you like my videos, please smash that like button, please do subscribe. It's just been a sweltering hot day and I went to see my mum this afternoon. Now I discussed over the phone, I, I rang my mum up. My mum had rung me up and left messages on my mobile and I rang my mother up this morning. And I said, can I come up today? Because I would have gone up yesterday, but my mum didn't ask me. So I thought, right, we'll, we'll go up today. And I didn't say anything to anybody. And my mum didn't tell her neighbours. So around quarter past 12, a white taxi parked outside the bottom flats. So they, he parked a, a, an Indian driver, a nice Asian driver, he was quite polite and quite friendly, in a big white taxi, parked outside the bottom flats. The one with the ginger hair and glasses and the walking stick. So I walked out of my block of flats and I had to walk down to the next block and I pushed an auto automatic button, the door opened and I sat in the back. And the driver apologised because he'd parked outside the wrong block of flats. That's no problem. And um, he drove off to my mum's flat up in Upper Luton. So there was nothing wrong on the journey. It was a nice, safe journey. Safe journey. There was no loud music. There was no radio playing. His phone went off, but he didn't answer it. And... Um, the only there was a diversion on the Luton Road right at the top and he had to divert around the road my mum was at waiting outside and she went and paid the taxi I went into my mum's flat and it was like a sauna all the windows were shut and it was dark in there and I wouldn't like to live like that so it was pitch black, no windows were open, so I walked into what felt like a sauna, and it was dark, so I put a bit of life into my mum's flat, I got my mum to open the French windows, uh, and I started talking to my mum, because she, oh, she, she looked like she was sat in a funeral director's office, it was all black, and dreary and miserable and no wonder she feels miserable living like that so I tried to cheer my mum up but my mum is full of uh, she was upset because she said she was remembering my brother's birthday which was on the 27th of June so she was feeling miserable which I can understand so, I mean, I didn't know when my brother was born. Apparently it was the 27th of June, and he had a very short life. So she was feeling naturally upset and, and miserable. Um, had I remembered, I probably wouldn't have gone up there that, this week. I would have left her alone to, to, to remember. Um... So I sat with my mum and I let my mum started to speak and however much you try and let somebody get all their feelings out, it's going to upset you and it's going to, so I take, I go outside and I let my mum speak and I try and cool down and, and relax because I know I've got to come back to my flats with all the shit that I'm dealing with and I don't want to get across and annoyed up, up, up with my mother and come back and feel like shit myself. So my mum said she'd had two takeaway leaflets delivered whilst I'd been away, Top's Pizza. But my mum, my mum and I decided to get the takeaway from Super Pizza because we know that that is a reputable company. It arrives hot and it's decent. And my mum actually had some chips with sauce. 
so she had something to eat and um, I had something to eat I had spaghetti bolognese and a chicken burger and I've got the strawberry cheesecake here when you get to my age and my, especially at my mum's age you don't worry what you look like right you don't right these self-obsessed people my mum needs professional help and support and she's not getting it and we've just got women like taking the piss out of the way my mum looks the way i look i told i said to my mum i don't i don't i don't give a fuck right looks don't deal with problems right right it doesn't does it you can have have the longest legs and the beautiful face and you can still get problems right it doesn't matter what you look like fuck off i'm just trying to help you know you try and help people you don't try and make them feel worse so there's the strawberry cheesecake so i've been out for what, four or five hours there's the strawberry cheesecake I mean, I, I was glad to get out of this place because I, I feel like I'm stuck in a prison and my mum's stuck in an even worse prison than I'm stuck in because we're still reaping what my dad left us when, it, when he died. Absolutely fuck all. He, he went off this planet, probably with a big smile on his face. He controlled and manipulated me and my mother for years. And even though he's dead, it's still my mother and I are still being manipulated, tortured and mistreated. And she's bound to get angry and I'm bound to get upset. Because we're both trying to move on and we can't. So... I've been round my mum's, that's what I'm trying to say. My, Charlotte came round and she got my mum some things. My mum asked Charlotte to get yoghurts and water and some yuzu drinks. And Charlotte was dressed in a very, very short pair of denim shorts, tiny little shorts and a vest and she dyed her hair blonde. And there's my mum and I, two middle-aged women. Well, well my mum's elderly, I'm middle-aged. And, and Charlotte's a lot younger than me. She's 30 years younger than me. And there's my mum needing help and support. And there we are, both sat there feeling like shit. round to see my mum today and I've been round there for four five hours and I went to see her by myself and I went up there in in a, in a taxi but the games are still being played I am trying to find a, a, a suitable place so that me and my mum can live it live together away from all this bullshit She's nearly 80, she doesn't need all this crap, young women showing, up, showing their bits off to her. And I certainly don't want it either. So, me and my mum had a chat, my mum had some chips, I got my mum to eat, I got my mum to talk and get everything out of her system and now I'm back home and I'm, I'm dealing with the shit that usually goes on people fucking worrying about what I look like when I couldn't give a damn I really couldn't there's more, 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 to, more to life than, than looks and if silly stupid people 
think that it, it's what you look like that matters, then you're so damn wrong. And yes, today has been a strain on my mental health because I learnt all about my brother who died in 1967 and I, I, I've got mental health issues and it hurts me, right? So I feel strained and I feel tired and I don't need stupid dickheads taking the piss out of what I look like. And there's one dickhead in particular that needs to grow up, get a life, and, and leave people alone. My mum's been through a lot, I've been through a lot, and I don't need a fucking dickhead sticking his nose in, getting the wrong end of the stick and causing trouble. It's very nice to see Charlotte doing some shopping for my mother. And I told my mum about the shitty Sainsbury's delivery that was all cut up and broken and split. We had a good old chat. Now I've got to take my dog out for a walk a, a bit later on. And I'm not cross, I'm tired and mentally strained because I've got an elderly mother that needs help and support. And all someone's concerned with is worrying about what I look like. And they need to fuck off and get a life, to be fair. <laughs>